personal dampener to uh, show you what's inside so hang on to your butts man oh this is gonna kill me oh. <laughs> That silicone is rock hard. the most uh, incredible hand job I've ever seen uh, as far as Hacksaw goes. Okay, I pretty much saw it all the way through this by hand because I couldn't fit it in my bandsaw. So we're going to pull this apart, bend this over here so I can show you what's inside here. So let's have a look. Okay, here's the puck thing or whatever. Anyway, the silicone is hard. Ugh. So if you got a bouncer that's over a half a million miles old, I'm gonna say it's junk. All I can tell you is I was very skeptical when Bruce told me that my bouncer needed replaced, very skeptical. But I thought, well, the guy knows what he's talking about. He's been doing this for a long time. 30, 40 years, whatever, 40 years. Anyway, so I put the torsional dampener on and the mercury-filled balancer, and I'm here to tell you, it's working. It has been, it has totally taken out that nasty, harsh vibration. So there's the deal inside, but look at, how look at how thick and nasty this silicone is this is the consistency of like silicone gasket material wow it's like pushing out constipation <laughs> ah. okay there we go and then you've got these deals that go in there like that and you can see inside there this is where they they run wow i cut through that holy moly i'm one tough son of a gun anyway you can see how nasty that stuff is it's just goop see you run it like that it's like it's like silicone in a tube. I am a now I am now a believer in uh, changing these out. 
I should have changed this a long time ago because the truck had a real bad, it just, it was this nasty shaking. And I never owned a big horsepower electronic engine and I just figured it was all that torque that was banging things. And then we thought, well, maybe it's the drive line and we started looking at U-joints and we couldn't find anything wrong with the U-joints or the drive line. It was this thing. Uh, I'm here to tell you, replacing this work. Uh, if you got a vibration, you got, if you got a half a million miles on your truck, I would replace this. I just, I would totally replace it. Okay, when we uh, did the top on this, we replaced the harnesses inside. But as you can see, this one's full of oil, but it's coming from the original harness plug in here. And you can see the amount of oil that this thing was saturated with. So my question is, should I just replace the main engine harness? I mean, is that is that gonna is that causing my gremlins and my issues? And then this plug in here, okay, this does not look like the back one. The back one was covered up, looks fairly fairly weather tight, but this one, all it had was this cover over it. And it was clear full of dirt in here. I've cleaned it out. But I steam cleaned the crap out of this thing. And uh, I'm just wondering if I got water in here or did something anyway. I don't know. Somebody that's worked on these, please tell me what I should do here. Should I just replace? I mean, I just got the feeling I should probably replace this whole harness. That's just the engine harness. This one here is the one that goes up into the truck, so...
Nick 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 Okay, time for more fire. Gotta get this out of here. Stand by for fire. Fire talks to me. Jeff like fire. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna start a backfire. I'm gonna start one on this end. Come on, that's enough. Hope that's enough. Okay, that was only 19 gallons of diesel that did that. 19 gallons. Probably burn good for a while, and then it'll probably flame down. There's a lot of wet stuff in there, and it got snowed on. This pile's burning a little better than the last one. There's a lot more dead stuff in here, not so much wet. It's going through it pretty good, so I just need to keep it kind of bunched up. Make sure that I get everything, all the little crap pushed in there. Jake's going to come back later and run this, which is fine with me, because I'm not the excavator operator that he is. I never get to run this. And it's pretty obvious, I know. But I'm learning. I'll get the hang of it. I just don't want to be out here in the middle of the night again. Now I know there were some Canadian guys that said I need to call some BC boys to show me how to burn this shit. 
and I know if you put some air to it, blah, 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 but I don't have that stuff, and I don't burn enough wood often enough to justify that, so I just light it on fire and poke it till she's gone. The other one burned up really well, so show there. You look afraid him? I do. You like money? You like money? I ain't afraid him? Me too. Well, you better get in on this free money. It's all a bunch of BS. Basically, when somebody talk like that, I know they full of crap. Ain't no money. WWW, redneck, give me some money. Well, guess what Jeff's doing again tonight? I got two little piles left that uh, haven't burnt down. So I've just stacked them all up and got them burning again. Technically, I'm supposed to stay here all night. Here, we got a good fire here. Why don't I see if I can screw that up? Huh? Fire! It's cool stuff, ain't it? Jeff the Pyromaniac. Bet the neighbors love me. Stinking the hell out of the neighborhood. Yeah, I got money to give you. Lots of money. Lots and lots of money. Ah. Matt and Jake are uh, putting in a leftover concrete pipe that was on this farm. And this is a roadway over to their stack yard and stuff corrals and uh, it had a little teeny yeah you can see it over there in the weeds probably I don't know what would that be a little eight inch concrete pipe through there for the water but since we've changed the way the water flows and I'll show you that in the drone video we've moved the ditch over to where it's got to come across this roadway so we thought we'd put the bigger pipe in here for them to cross and then back in there where the excavator is where Jake's at is like a giant swampy area and we cleaned all the uh, brush and little trees out of that area they want to put some pine trees in there and some grass and make a nice little area in there so that's where all the trees came from that we've burned anyway this weather today sucks absolutely sucks I don't know where this came from it's like we don't get any snow all winter then all of a sudden we get a ton of snow okay this is uh, the burn pile we burned the other day and uh, I'm pretty sure this snow is gonna finish putting her out but it was pretty much gone but we cleaned out all those trees out over there that was a mess stacked everything up over here and burned it got just a little bit of pile left on this end stumps and green things that don't want to burn so I'm headed to Idaho Falls to get Shane some money when I did the GoFundMe he was down to ten dollars so I need to get up there I want to thank everybody who's donated that's totally awesome uh, I know Shane's pretty jacked about it, so thank you. Hey everybody, want to talk about some awesome subscribers again today. Want to start out with Ty Fleshman. He's from Cleveland, Ohio. He's got a C15. Says he's thinking about going to a switchblade. Do it, buddy. Do it. You'll enjoy it. Gene Groby from Austin, Minnesota. Thanks, Gene, for subscribing. Ray Jones from Frog Jump, Tennessee. Uh, thanks for subscribing, Ray. He's got some equipment, and they said they farmed 3,000 acres. That's a lot of acres. Garland Willingham from New Mexico. Thanks, Garland. Taylor Alridge from the St. Louis area. Thanks for subscribing, Taylor. Doug Richeson from Visela, California. 
Raymond Horton from Richmond, Virginia. And Russ Walker, he's from Hillam, and that's in North Yorkshire, England. Thank you for subscribing, Russ. And Todd, AKA Massey Man, from Southern Ontario. Thanks for subscribing, guys. Oh, and uh, last Friday was Lauren Morelli's birthday. Want to wish Lauren from Petaluma, California a happy birthday. Hey, everybody. The e-store is done and open for business. You can get you a couple of calendars and a nice-looking old Kenny hat. All you got to do is go to www dot jpaydirt.com even a dumbass rodent such as myself can do that but if you can't do that here's a link you just click on this you'll find it in the description below enjoy he's bound and down loaded up and trucking are we gonna do what they say can be done are we've got a long way to go and a short time to get there Hey everybody, got some awesome trucks to show you uh, today. This first one is from Linus Johansson, and he says, Good morning, Americans. Stand by for the Swede. He said, send you some pictures from Sweden. You'll, you seem to like Caterpillar and Low Boys. Yes, I do. I don't know if you have any Scania trucks in America. You know, I've never seen one. I used to drive the D6H, D7H, and excavators. Trucks is handled by the owner of the company I work for. These are some interesting trucks you guys use over there, but no, I guess I've never seen any here. Okay, this next picture is from George Foster, and he's from Cedar Rapids, Iowa. And uh, this is his baby. This is his Mack truck. And George, I'm sorry, but Somehow I lost the details on that truck. I don't know what year Mac it is. I had a 72, kind of looked like that. Yours looks quite a bit newer, but that looks like a really well taken, well taken care of truck. Plus, George is a suicide jockey, so I got this picture off his Facebook page. I love this. Uh, all these cars hooked up to this tanker getting fuel. Kind of reminds me of the federal government. That's the federal government, and those are all the people sucking off of it. Okay, this next truck, this is an interesting truck, and uh, this is from Philip Box, and he says, here's a, pic a picture of my baby, an 85 Mercedes-Benz Unimog, here pictured on the calm side of Double Island Point near Rainbow Beach, Southeast Queensland, Australia. Anyway, thought you might be interested. Love the channel, by the way. You know what? That is a cool looking truck, Philip. Okay, this next truck is from John Kilmer. He says, couple photos of my hobby, a 74 359 S Peterbilt. That short nose, right? Uh, powered by the other C word, an NTA 370 with a 125 13 fuller. Engine was freshened and transmission was turned into a double overdrive by an old school Cummins shop. Dave Crump Diesel in Albany, New York area. Trailers courtesy of my part time employer, John Kilmer from Stottsville, New York. That is a cool looking truck, John but it's got them Chicago wobblers on it. This next truck is from Tyler Ruthenbeck. He says, love the videos, Jeff. My name is Tyler, I'm 29 from Denver, Colorado. Here's my truck today, 105K gross. That's a lot of French fries and Happy Meals. Um, this next truck is from Neil Strong. And he's out of Golden, Colorado. He says, uh, here, here's a picture of my 88 Peterbilt 377 tandem with a 3406B and a 13 speed. Use it to pull equipment as well. A 97 Peterbilt 379 3406B with a 10 speed. Yuck. 10 speed. I'm getting rid of mine. Uh, I have secured an 18 speed, so hang on to your butts for that. Okay, this next truck, these are some really cool trucks. Uh, Day Raidenbaugh, uh, we email back and forth, and this guy's got some cool stuff. He's from El Dorado, Kansas, 
he says the top truck is a 49 Diamond T pickup. It's sitting on a 1980 auto car with a rollback bed that I used to haul stuff around on the farm. Sitting on the front of these two trucks is a 35 Diamond T. 211 with a hoist bed, a true barn find. Got it from a farmer out here who was using it to carry wheat to the elevator and blew up the engine back in the 50s and then parked it. The engine has been fixed, but the truck will remain original. You don't find them in such good shape. No, you sure don't. Okay, this next truck is from Adam Wright. He's from Kennewick, Washington. Says he loves watching my videos and he's learned a lot. He says he's a hobby trucker and a member of the AT. HS, he's, this is a 72 W923 with a 1693 turbocharged after cooled and an RTO 9513. It has two speed rear ends, 456, 621. Uh, anyway, that's awesome, two speed rear ends. Wish I had some of those. He said, uh, he says there's, I have found there is not a lot of widespread knowledge about these engines anymore. Well, I know plenty. You go somewhere like the cat start, yeah. Uh, all those guys are dead or retired. Or there's me. Your videos about old Kenny have been some of the best info I've seen. The water pump is leaking, and I wanted to get your take if there is anyone out there selling replacements. Nope. Adam, I highly doubt you're going to get a replacement. You're going to have to go to the cat store or somewhere to get the parts to do it and all it's going to consist of is some ball bearings and a uh, water pump seal uh, whether or not you can still get the seal I don't know I would bet you could try Felpro or somebody like that I've had them make, make complete gasket kits for stuff like uh, D336's for my friend over in England for, he's got twin V8 D336s in a boat and I got Fell Pro to make him a complete gasket kit and that included the water pump seal, so check that out. And remember, if the women don't find you handsome, they should at least find you handy. It's all right.